All right, everybody, Stocks by the Numbers, welcome back. Today's Tuesday, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Wanted to do an update here on a stock that I know a lot of you are watching. It's a nice, cheap company. It's in the finance space. Revenue's been growing. Name of the company we're looking at is SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI, listed here on the NASDAQ. Stock right now about 7.5, down 16 cents, just about 2% here on the day. Last time we looked at it was back here. It was mid-September, and we noted that the revenue was climbing significantly, quarter over quarter, year over year, the company consistently coming out above analyst expectations, especially on the revenue side. And you can see here, even with the big miss on the EPS side, the company still beats on revenue, beats on revenue, beats on revenue. Revenue has since chunked up here from the 400 million to the 500 million range last quarter, almost breaking that 600 million benchmark. But right now, Let's look at the numbers here. So we have a market cap of about seven and a third billion. Company still losing money per share, three times as volatile as the market. That's what the beta means, volatility of the stock, in relation to the overall volatility of the market. Company went net income positive last quarter, posting two cents. Look at this growth here, cannot be denied. Obviously, our numbers are different here, and we're seeing uh, you know 590 million, we're seeing 800 million, but either which way, the revenue has been increasing quarter over quarter and, of course, year over year, doing very well. So, obviously, in my opinion, you should follow the money. That That's what I said the first two, three times I looked at this stock. And uh, even going back here, late 21, early 22, in my opinion with this company, I, I feel like I can confidently say that we're probably going to have a grower over time because they consistently keep expanding their market share and expanding their footprint and they're bringing in more and more clients. That's obviously translating to more and more revenue. But again, in my opinion, with a company like this, I really think you just have to pick your spots. So when I first saw it, again, we were in this like long-term descending wedge. So if you want to get in, you know, down here, as you see, it was about $5 near the apex before it broke up and broke out to eight fifty. dollars so again, in my opinion, you just have to pick your spots. And if you're accumulating shares and building a position, then obviously you want to try to time some of these dips here. And what I'm pointing out here is that this is this really seems to be a, a very technical mover. Even though over time, again, in my opinion, I feel like the stock is probably going to grow up and go back to double digits and probably hold and grow from there potentially. But in the shorter term, it's all about picking your spots and looking at the technicals. Because again, we're, we're forcing these wedges and then we have a pop out. And then we have our dip and our rebound. But even again, you can see here, you have like the upward consolidation zone. And then we break down to the lows. And then we bounce up to the highs. And then we consolidate down into a wedge. And then we have to try to time the bottom and catch the pop out of the wedge. Right? And now... We can see that recently, last time I mentioned it was right around here in the Discord. I know I didn't make a video. Uh, again, last video was done back here mid-September, but over here in November, I remember someone asked me about SoFi, and I said, in my opinion right now, it's wedging. Try to catch it at the bottom of the wedge, 658. I even drew it out right there, and you can see, look at the low there, 656, and then it went to 641. So, like we always say, we're never going to catch the absolute bottom or the absolute top. But if we have a technical lining up, and if you choose to do options, all you have to do, like I always say, is make sure you buy yourself some time to allow the move to happen. And then that'll eliminate the stress and the emotion, hopefully. But long story short, we had this wedge. We were down here at about six and a half. Boom, we broke out of the wedge, got up to $10. We pulled back, we bounced around, and then we recently chunked down. Looking at last quarter's earnings, though, we can see a very nice beat on the top and bottom line again. And the stock, the company uh, goes EPS positive, excuse me. But here is our resistance trend line here that I drew out. This is connecting the bottom of this candle here, May 15th, 2023. It was going to the bottom of this body on this candle right here, November 21st, 2023. And then you can see when you zoom in, it's basically the bottom. It ended up being, again, I just connected those bottoms. This all happened recently. I haven't looked at the stock, honestly, in the last couple of months. But you can see now that this candle 
basically came down and almost touched the bottom of this resistance, uh, excuse me, of this support trend line. And you can see here we broke through and then we bounced up. We had a nice rally back into the nines. We came down. You can see multiple bounces off of that support line. And then we rallied up, rejected off of that fib right there. Looks like at about one, uh, at about 918. And then boom, we chunked down and we've been stepping since then. So I know a lot of people are probably pumped about this. And of course, you don't want to hear something like this. However, in my opinion, it does look like we do have a potential bear flag setting up. So I actually think that this stock eventually breaks down back to this bottom fib here at 718 and actually goes lower back into the sixes, potentially forming a double bottom here in the long term, the low here, 641. So in my opinion, uh, I do think you can get a little bit of a better entry here. And again, if you're a long-term investor and you're planning on holding this company, you see the way it's growing and you're planning to hold it for the next three, five, ten years, then again, in my opinion, you want to wait for these dips, and that's when we add to the position. Because even though the revenue has been growing, the company does technically still have a couple of billion dollars uh, of debt on its balance sheet. And we know that when a company is not 100% financially sound, and they have the ability to go down, this is the red flag. Well, not really the red flag, but... This is just the alert that I always put out to you guys, just reminding you that markets are basically at all-time highs and we consistently climb no matter what the economic data is, which leads me to believe, in my opinion, that at any moment they can rug pull and they can completely tank this market and everyone's going to be screwed, left holding the bag at these ridiculously overinflated prices that we should have never seen to begin with. So... We have CPI numbers coming out today, apparently above expectations. Now, remember also, the whole six months, the last six months, we've been rallying because inflation was quote-unquote cooling, and now these CPI numbers come out, and we see that they're above expectations. So all of those cooling headlines and all of these BS articles coming out telling you at, you know how resilient the economy is and how great the market is, it's actually nonsense in my opinion, right? Because the data doesn't lie. So if we have unemployment rising, we have CPI numbers coming in above what analysts were expecting, and now they're supposedly saying that that may potentially delay Fed rate cuts down the road moving forward. Remember, this was the entire narrative as to why we're in this six-month rally here since the end of October. And now we're seeing in the data that it's all BS and it's not coming to fruition. So the fact that this data hit today and these indices are green, in my opinion, is an absolute disgrace. In my opinion, we should be down several hundred percentage points because this is technically bad news, in my opinion. This is not good news. Unless you feel that this is good news, I mean, let us know down in the comment section, but I just feel like... You know, we, we paint this picture, we paint this narrative that everything's getting better, and then even when the numbers come out and show us that it's not getting better, and it's not going according to plan, and it's going to be more delayed than we previously expected, it's like all of that is just pushed to the side, none of it matters, and stocks always go up. And we all know that that is nonsense. And we all know that now, probably in a market like this, like they always used to say, when you have everyone and their brother talking about stocks and what they're buying and how much they're making, that's usually when the market begins to tank down. And of course, going on a six-month rally, in my opinion, for absolutely no reason, now I'm sure everyone and their brother that you talk to is probably doing very well on the market. Look at this stock. Look at that stock. It doubled. It tripled for me. And usually, again, like I said, when you have, you know, bus boys and people at the checkout line in the supermarket and, and, and the guy who cuts your hair, when you have all of these people talking about the market and how great they're doing, that's usually when the drop and the big correction comes. So I, got, I went off on a big tangent, and again, my point is, if you buy in here on something like SoFi, in my opinion, at 7.5, and, and the markets do drop down and correct, this stock can absolutely drop into the 5s and to the 4s, without a doubt. But on the flip side, for the longer term, again, even if you're buying here at 7.5, and, and we go down before we go up, based on the rate at which SoFi has been growing and consistently beating revenue estimates along the way, chances are we could make a very strong case that given some time the stock will most likely again get back to double digits and probably grow nicely 11 12 dollars over time 
because again, the growth really cannot be denied here. I mean, looking very, very well. And again, for last quarter going net income positive, but let's look at the numbers real quick. I, I Again, I've already looked at this company a bunch of times, so you can go back on the channel. You guys can look at the uh, the previous videos. Usually now, like I said, once, once I look at the numbers, unless a situation drastically changes in the fundamentals, then usually moving forward, in my opinion, if I know something like SoFi, which I felt was a buy, if I know something like SoFi is a buy, all I really have to do is pull up the chart and, like I said, just try to look for the most advantageous entry price possible. And again, the last time we looked at it was right here in the Discord, mid-November. We were in the wedge, and I said, right around like that 660 mark, you should start buying, pop out of the wedge, boom, again, stock went to 10 and a half. So, you know, if you were in the Discord and you asked me about it, you got the heads up. I know a couple of people in there made a couple of bucks. But let's switch over here to stock charts very quickly. We can see the RSI sitting here at 4171. And you can see, look at the big drop, the big break below the 200-day uh, moving average here on the daily. And then you can see the stepping here happening up and down. This is why I'm saying we could potentially have our pole with our flag forming. And then we could break back into the low 7s and potentially the high 6s. The MACD recently crossed to the downside. That's kind of causing this little drop. But... Uh, in my opinion, I think it's just getting started. Steam friend, my apologies. Let's switch over here to the weekly very quickly. And we can see on the weekly, the RSI sitting here at about 46 and a quarter. You can also see the rejection on the weekly off of the 50-day moving average, 779. You can see now we're down there at 750, which is why I'm saying, again, a break potentially to the bottom Bollinger Band on the weekly, 639 in my opinion, could definitely happen and potentially should happen if that bear flag, you know, actually uh, forms and, and it breaks to the downside. So 639, in my opinion, could potentially be a short-term bottom. Uh, the other bottom on that candle again, 641, right? So it may not exactly get to 639. For all we know, it may come down 641, form that double bottom, and then pop back up into the 7s and the 8s. So only time will tell, but the MACD has recently crossed to the downside there a couple of weeks ago. That's adding to the sell-off as well. But overall, in my opinion, this seems like a grower. And I just wanted to show you the debt because, again, we have a market cap of seven and a third billion. And as of last year, we have about five and a third billion in debt. Now, the good thing is you can see the other metrics like the free cash flow here in the center you can see was as low, look at this, 2019, minus 217 million, goes positive, goes back negative 94 million, and then for 22, above 100 million, for 23, above 430 million, and also look at the cash, the cash back here, sub 700 million, up to 13 billion, back to 768 million, 185 billion, 362 billion. So essentially almost doubled the cash from 22 to 23, while at the same time bringing the debt down a little bit, 563 billion down to 536 billion. But if we look over the last couple of quarters, you can see the debt climbed up to 6.61 billion. That is almost a market cap of the company. And since then, it's been slowly pulling back 636. And now last quarter, it drops about a billion down to 536. So in my opinion, with this company growing their cash on hand, look at this, 185 up to three and a half, three, 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 six, two billion as of last quarter. So in my opinion, I actually think the company, well, they should anyway, in my opinion, they should begin to take this cash and they really should begin to start paying back this debt and bringing it down because I feel like it's really one of the, the standalone negative fundamentals that this company is dealing with. Because again, looking at the revenue side, the company's been coming in above expectations, growing in line or better than analysts expected for the last several years. And on the quarterly side as well, consistently coming in above expectations. And on the EPS side as well, the company is ha has losses more narrow than Wall Street expected for the year, expecting EPS positivity for 2024. And if we switch over quarterly, again, we have our big drop here two quarters ago. But overall, the company really, in my eyes, seems to be solid as a rock. And their popularity, apparently, seems to be growing. And again, they consistently keep getting, you know, new clients to come in. And that's obviously translating to very, very nice growth here on the revenue side. 
the cost of goods, I feel like, you know, look at this growth in revenue here over these last several quarters. The, the growth in revenue, in my opinion, is significantly outweighing the cost that it's actually costing them to generate said revenue. Even the operating expenses really appear to be kind of in line with the, with, the, with the growing numbers that we're seeing over the quarters. Total revenue minus cost of goods sold yields gross profit. We can see that is basically consistently increasing. And of course, gross profit minus operating expenses yields operating income. And we can see that we were negative tens of millions, then we go positive tens of millions, get above 100 million, almost 200 million, as of last quarter, above 300 million. So in my opinion, these numbers look absolutely phenomenal. And the only real red flag that I can see personally for a stock like SoFi is that debt that we talked about. We have assets outweighing liabilities. It has always been that case going back the last several quarters. That keeps us with positive equity, right? Assets minus liabilities yields positive equity. You can see the equity basically maintaining like that five and a half billion mark level. The debt, again, has been bouncing around, but last quarter, chunking it down to a billion, you can see that's the lowest the debt has been since going all the way back to Q3 of 22. So that's why I'm saying, in my opinion, if this company can just keep doing what it's doing and this debt slowly begins to step down quarter over quarter, five, one billion, you know, four, four, eight billion, four and a half billion. If they can consistently step that down while consistently stepping up their revenue and now the EPS just went positive. So if they can even maintain flatness or even slight positivity and not suffer too much bleeding and, and, and have some wide losses, then in my opinion, this stock is going to go even sig more significantly higher than it's been over the last uh, like 12 to 18 months. Because I know it ran up to the 10s and almost 11 or wherever it was. But I'm telling you, in my opinion, if they maintain this revenue and just maintain most of what they're doing while bringing this debt in line, in my opinion, this could easily be a 15 to $20 stock. And I, and I said, in my opinion, when I first looked at the company several times, that it was probably going to be a slow, steady grower over time. And I mentioned that the more they get their name out there, the more recognition they get, then the, the bigger institutions are going to come in and they're going to begin to start trusting them with some other investment vehicles that they're looking to bring to the table. And if I remember correctly, the last update I did back in middle of September, we spoke about SoFi. I don't remember exactly what it was, so don't hold me to it because it was six months ago. But I do remember uh, making a video talking about IPO underwriting. So now we have institutions looking to bring companies public and we have an up and comer like SoFi Technologies now getting a piece of that IPO underwriting. And, and I said it going back all the way in the original videos that they're slowly going to grow and then the institutions are going to start piling in and then before you know it, they're going to slowly become a player and they're going to be, a, you know, a name in the space. They're going to be their own financial institution. I mean, technically they are, but you understand what I'm saying, a larger, bigger player. And uh, yeah, like I said, last time we looked at it, the stock ran very nicely. It was up like 50, 60% from the previous video. And we got the news about the IPO underwriting. So that's why, in my opinion, everything right now is going according to plan. We can see the book value technically was stepping down quarter over quarter for quite some time, getting down to 528 as of last quarter, going up a little bit to 536. But we can see we're trading about one and a half times book right now. We've seen more crazy unrealistic valuations with other companies so with a company like this that's steadily growing their business and beating estimates trading one and a half times book in my opinion could be viewed as very very low price to sales down here now sub three that's the second lowest it's been going back to the tail end of 22 price to cash flow down here at 14 and a third that's the lowest it's been over the last seven or eight quarters Price to book, again, down here, 1.43 times book, right? Recently, it got above 1.5 and, and almost hit 2 times book, and now it's currently sitting at 1.43 times book. So, in my opinion, that's why I feel conservatively, based on what the company's been showing us, and again, I know the debt is there, but they did chunk it down about a billion quarter over quarter. 
So in my opinion, conservatively, I mean, we can easily trade this stock at two times book value, in my opinion, and it would probably be justified. And I believe that would yield around an $11 stock. So in my opinion, there's still more room to grow. But again, I feel personally that you really have to keep an eye on it on the technicals with this one because I feel like a lot of the traders are involved in this company just because it's so cheap. You know, people like to do their their cash secured puts and their covered calls and whatnot. So, you know, they look for specific types of companies like that so that not much capital is required. That's what I always said about a stock like Palantir. Before Palantir started exploding, the stock was at seven, eight. 10 12 dollars a share right so if so if your calls get cold then you have to cover for 100 shares but if the stock's 12 dollars a share you know you're coming out of pocket 1200 and change right it's not the end of the world it's not a massive chunk of liquidity that you have to keep on hand just in case whereas again if we look at a stock like disney if you had to cover 100 shares obviously it would cost significantly more that is why a lot of these young up and comer up and coming traders are doing a lot of these option strategies and by only having a couple of thousand liquidity they have to keep it cheaper with stocks like your rivians your palantirs your sofis down here in the seven eights tens you understand well i'm sure you do because if you're watching the video you're probably one of those traders but basically in my opinion long story short you got to keep an eye on the technicals and you got to pick your spots. So me, in my opinion right now, if I had cash on hand, if you're asking me, would I buy SoFi right now in this moment? Technically, in my opinion, the answer is no. Because again, as I mentioned, on the technical side, in my opinion, it looks like a bear flag is setting up. So I'm going to wait to see if I have confirmation for that. And if I do have confirmation for that, as we looked at stock charts before, we can see very low sevens and potentially going down into the sixes. So if I have that potential to step in at a little bit of a better price, it's all about pricing and timing. So I'm going to remain patient and take what the market gives me. So again, everyone is pumped about this stock and I know people are just piling in and that's fine, obviously. I mean, it's your money. It's, it's up to you. But in my opinion, if you were new to SoFi and you heard about it and you wanted to get in, Again, in my opinion, it looks like the technicals are showing us that we could potentially get a little bit of a cheaper price. So I personally would be patient. But overall, SoFi seems to be looking very, very attractive in my opinion. We have our return percentages basically all moving in the right direction. Very, very slightly negative here. Probably going to go positive in my opinion sometime soon. The gross margin percentage has basically been consistent. It has been consistently climbing quarter over quarter here. You can see we were back here sub 44.5%, jumped up to almost 50. 57 59.5, 60. 63.5, 65.65% as of last quarter. That is 50% growth in gross margin percentage over the course of about the last seven quarters. That is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. The operating margin was negative 17%, jumped up 10 percentage points, and then exploded positive to double digits, and has been consistently climbing since then. 16%, 19%, look at this, 26%, 35.2% as of last quarter. This is a 300% move from our negative 17 percent seven quarters ago ebitda same story earnings before interest taxes depreciation amortization you can see almost minus eight percent instantly jumps positive and then immediately explodes up into the high teens here at 18.4 percent and then keeps climbing 23 26 33 last quarter 41.36 it's about a 500% increase from where it was roughly seven months ago. And it's the same story with the net margin percentage. We looked at this before. The company recently last quarter goes net margin positive. And you can see, look at this, back here at the bottom. Well, not really the bottom, but towards the lower end of their numbers here, roughly almost two years ago. You can see the net margin 
was over minus 24 and a half percent and it was climbing very nicely here got to minus five six percent started heading in the opposite direction minus seven back down to minus 35 the lowest it's been going back the last six or seven quarters and then boom last quarter positive five and a half percent asset turnover technically dipped down by one but they've been maintaining that value for the last four or five quarters and you can see look at the debt to assets and and the debt to equity ratios coming back down from those highs well the debt to equity we can see climbed up and then started to come back down technically not the lowest it's been but the debt to assets you can see has been consistently stepping down down almost 50 percent from where it was roughly about a year and a half ago so in my opinion again i i will say that this company has been pretty consistent look at this growth here just over the last two years going from low 300 mid 300 million mark up into the 400 millions for about a year now the last two quarters above 500 million almost six as of last quarter and you can see we're expecting to maintain the high 500 million marks for the next two quarters and then we're supposedly going to break into the 600 millions so that's why if this company keeps doing what it's doing and everything goes according to plan and of course no massive negative catalyst comes out that completely destroys the stock then in my opinion we have a winner on our hands here however it technically has been up and is recently starting to come down so if you try to time the bottom and you're a little bit early this is why i'm saying it it, it really should be more for a long-term play unless you have a perfect wedge setting up like we did here back in november and we call out you know the pop and then it pops up but again technically it just broke below the moving averages and it just broke below the support trend line and now we have our big drop and we have our slow steps going up and down potentially forming our flag which means we could break and drop back down in my opinion to the sixes so you know it ran up and now it's been stepping down so you know again everyone wants the best prices but at, at the end of the day, you, it is so rare to be perfect with it. It is so rare. Again, I got this call right. I got this call right here in the Discord. When they asked, oh, what do you think about SoFi? Ba ba ba. I said, yeah, we're in a descending wedge. When it drops down here at 660 or whatever, buy it, in my opinion. And what happened? It dropped to 641, right? So if you're missing the big picture and you're a very emotional trader, then a situation like that, you might have immediately gotten upset and said, oh, it went down before it went up. Oh, it was bad time and I'm selling it. I'm taking a loss, but, 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 right? When in reality, you missed the big picture and you didn't even let the trade develop. So this is why it, it's, it's a lot of soul searching and it's a lot of, it's a lot of your emotions and how you're personally going to react when it comes to trading. And listen, some of us are extremely emotional and you know i mean you know i guess we could say there's nothing wrong with that but when it comes to trading obviously it, it could be a big big hindrance on on your success on your outcomes so if you're an emotional trader then i would say in my opinion you should do one of two things either a buy more time right like i always say everyone wants to look like a financial genius Oh, this stock dipped down. I'm buying, uh, you know, calls 20% out of the money for this Friday. And I'm going to try to catch the pop and catch the explosion. Why? Why even do that to yourself? If you see a trade setting up and you have, let's just say, 90% conviction that this will break out and get to eight, let's say, conservatively. It's going to go from six and a half to eight. In my opinion, don't buy the calls for this Friday or even next Friday. Give yourself some time to try to lower your emotional stress, maintain your confidence, and also try to kind of push the scales in your favor by having more time you're quote unquote ensuring enough time for the move to happen. 
So that, that in my opinion, would be step one. If, if you're an options trader and you're trying to buy like a week out, a week and a half out, but, you know, sometimes your timing is off or you get emotional and, and you've been taking losses. You're not sure when to sell. If you're in that boat, in my opinion, you should be buying more time. You should be trying to secure these moves, buy yourself enough time and just eliminate that stress. Or, of course, on the flip side, if you want to be even more safe, I guess you could say, quote unquote, because, of course, anything can happen when you buy a stock. The company could go out of business tomorrow and the stock could go to zero. Please understand the risks involved. But long story short, if you do not like doing the option side or you feel that you're just one of those people who just, you know, has bad luck and it never works out, then there is nothing wrong with accumulating shares. I always go back again, you know, I, I know I've been doing this for, for quite some time and I told you guys I got into finance i was a broker for a few years that was all the way back in like 2012 2013 so a lot has changed over the last 12 13 years and of course a lot of stock values have grown significantly over that time frame so back when i was over there at the firm like i said 2012 2013 amd was trading between nine and twelve dollars okay now the stock is over two hundred dollars so now think about this. Imagine I take you back 10, 12 years ago in time. Yes, I understand. It's a big chunk of time. You're talking about a decade, a decade plus of time. However, chances are most of you are probably going to be here 10 years from now, and you're probably going to be still looking at these stocks, and you're probably going to be kicking yourself in the ass saying, oh, if I just followed the stocks that were doing well, I could have just kept buying shares and boom, I'd have, you know, hundreds of thousands, I'd have millions of dollars. So if you quote unquote know how to be most successful, why put the bulk of your liquidity in these extremely high risk, high speculation, short term trades? This is why I recently started looking at smaller companies like the Fubos, the Stems, and Soundhound, of course, having a great day today, getting up huge, back up here at around $7, wherever the heck it is. But again, think about how many videos I did talking about Soundhound. And that entire time, you could have accumulated shares of that stock between anywhere from like two and a half to as low as like 160, right? And now the stock's at seven, and they technically didn't even do any crazy stuff to justify that type of explosion. So imagine if the clients keep coming in, the company consistently keeps growing their revenue and now expand that to five, 10 years from now. And what if we turn around and the stock is $120 a share eight years from today? Yeah, yeah, it took eight years. But if you build a position in these companies over time, it should really work out significantly well and it will probably outpace the couple of you know lucky massive trades that you returned those couple of times so this is why looking at the stocks the way i do now in my opinion if i had a time machine and went back i would accumulate in my opinion and i showed you guys what happened with smci that stock's staying between 30 and like 17 for years. And now today it's the, one of the hottest up and coming stocks. People saying it's not going to stop. It just got added to the S&P 500. It's hitting highs, $1,200, $1,300 a share. And it was all you can eat back in the 30s, the 20s, and the high teens years ago. Right? So when we look at it like that, you can say, oh, it's simple. Yeah, you just buy shares. Right. But in the moment... Everyone wants to try to be the financial genius, a financial guru. We like to brag and boast about our gains and, and how smart we are and, and how we saw the pattern and we called it perfectly. And everyone wants to chase 2,000% returns every 24 hours. Meanwhile, at the end of the day, if you just find a decent company and you pick your points carefully... You can build a position over time and years down the road, you are going to be up again even more than if you landed a couple of nice big quick trades and, and made yourself some thousands real quick. 
So this is why, again, in my opinion, I, I do it the way I do it. But so far, we looked at this a bunch of times. So this is why I, usually when I go back to these stocks, I don't know. I mean, I don't mind going back and, and reviewing to see how we did. But also at the same time, I like to move forward and look for new situations as well. So that's why I'm saying all the times back here that I looked at this stock, I said it was a buy in my opinion, and it's a grower. And technically, it's up. But again, if you're looking to take a position, you have to pick your spots carefully. And you can't just ignore some of these technicals setting up because the kids are talking about it and you want to get involved again in my opinion that's a piss poor way to analyze these situations shouldn't let anyone influence where you put your hard-earned cash but i'm gonna end it there because i talked way too much for no reason so once again this is stocks by the numbers i want to thank you guys for stopping by if you have any questions comments or concerns drop it down in the comment section i'm usually very quick to reply thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel and of course subscribe to the channel that is our handshake agreement that is how you help me help you but more importantly moving forward like i always say i understand that markets are rocky they're volatile and they're very uncertain so i want to wish all of you success i hope everyone makes a couple of dollars thanks for stopping by and i'll see you in the next one